All right, we are live. We're going to wait for some people to get in, and then we will start forging. person watching so we're going to be forging sorry i'm like really close up to the um it's great not right now we're going to be forging some um tooling and so i'm going to be forging a slot punch which um will be used in an upcoming video where i'm going to be forging i'm going to try to forge a claw hammer basically a uh, you know, your typical um, carpenter hammer that you see on, well, it's not really a cartoon hammer, but, you know, we're going to be forging one of these on an upcoming video. So, but I need to forge out a new punch to be able to punch the hole through the eye because typically we use either, you know, a big round punch which it takes a lot of material and it takes a lot of work and it's you know we're only going to be working with a piece of 4140 like this um you know pretty ductile steel but Gabriel Frioga Figueroa I think it's how you say it thank you so much for joining in so um, and you know this 4140 size to the punch i don't know if you can kind of see that at all it's quite big so i and we're going to be forging this down a little bit more skinny for the claw hammer because it's not going to be too much differently sized than this but it's going to have straighter um claws and we're going to have a um you know a different um strength here i mean the other punch i can use is you know one of these punches but don't feel like doing that right now. And if everyone wants to say hi to our Bassett Helm puppy. So I'm going to be forging some tooling. I got some um, S7 tool steel here that I now have in the fire. And I'm trying to find my piece of um, S of my this A13 um, steel, which is the same steel I made this punch out of. Um, this punch is beat up after a couple um, forgings with it, so I'm going to forge a new one. It's not going to be a handled punch, but it is going to be a um, standard kind of chisel style punch. I don't have any chisels out right now, but it's going to be a standard chisel style punch. So let's get that on in the fire so we're not waiting here all night for metal to get hot. But so that's what we're going to be doing here. Get you uh, situated so you can be looking here. I'm going to be grabbing some chisels that I'm going to need for tonight. I'm 
I'm going to drop my flashlight in the house. Let me just get it for you. I'm working blindly. Anthony Gardella, thanks so much for joining in. Um, so here we go. This is an old um, kind of style slot punch um, I made, but it is only forged out of mild steel. So after only two forgings with it, it got beat up. I keep it around just because it works good enough, but I'm going to forge it out some A2 um, tool steel, which will then hold up a whole lot better. I'm going to scoot you guys back here a little bit so you can get a little bit better view of the workshop here. And so that's what we'll that's what we'll be using for this. Looks like our um, S7 tool steel is hot now, so um, I'm just going to go at it with this German um, pattern cross peen. This is about a three pound hammer. So it moves steel efficiently. So there you go, got our first heat in on the S7. Um, as you can tell, it is moving extremely slow. It is, S7, in my opinion, it's one of the toughest steels. It's it's really up there with O1 for um, efficiency and working. It just moves really slow and it takes a lot of effort to get in the shape that you want. That's why usually when I get S7, I'm getting it in that small, I'm working small sizes, like right there. I'm working with half inch round. It's, it's pretty small, but it holds up well. It's quite heat resistant. So it works well for um, hot tooling. And so that's what I, that's why, you know, you get S7 versus a lower grade steel. A2, um, which I'm also forging is better heat resistant or it's good heat resistant. But it's a little softer, so you can manipulate it better. O1 is usually bought, um, we usually buy it for making hammers, or as you can see, this is also um, some blade stock, about a quarter inch thick. I think this is about 820. 20 inches, 24 inches. I don't have my tape measure. Actually, I do have my tape measure out here. If I can find it. Oh, right where I left it on the anvil stand. 18 and a quarter inches. But we also have some two inch round, which I don't feel like grabbing right now because it is pretty ha heavy. And I'll turn you guys so you can actually see me and turn you guys directly into the light. Nathan Meredith, thanks so much for joining in. Um, so 
if you're not sure what's going on, we are working on forging some hot tooling for an upcoming video on my YouTube channel. In my upcoming video, we're going to forge a piece of 4140, if I can find where I left it last. And here you go. Here's the piece of 4140 that we're um, going to be forging into a typical claw hammer. But we're going to have the claws be straighter out. But let's get hammering. I'm going to be working on S7 again, and then we're going to hot file it to get the um, end off that we got messed up from flooding it. So next heat on that S1, we are going to be um, doing some hot rasping on it. We already have the hot rasp set up, and I'll be wearing some big gloves for that because the radiating heat coming off of that piece of metal is just terrible on the knuckles. But we have the piece of A2 nice and hot, so let's hammer that. My box jaw tongs here that I forged, and I did do a video on forging the box jaw tongs, but these are definitely your best friend when you're working with square stock. But they got bent out, and working on a project from another video. And they just broke. That is perfect example of what a cold shut does so if you guys don't know what a cold shut is cold shut is where you basically bend the metal pawn over itself and it doesn't weld it's bent itself back together so it looks like it's a solid piece but then it's not that's from me pinching off the material too tight there and not using the um, softer end um, edge of my anvil which then cause it to pinch off and form a cold shut, which then when stressed, cause it to break off. So I'll need to forge my, a new pair of box jaw tongs. So look for that in an upcoming video. Since my box jaw tongs are broken, we're just gonna use some old jaw tongs. are pretty picky when it comes to sizing and we're going to forge this is going to turn into a bad cold shut so I'm going to have to grab my hot cut hardy because I missed some strikes last time I was cutting the steel which then put some cuts into it grab this out to show you I don't know if you can see it's a little bright but there's some extra cuts in that piece that when I'll forge it down will cause a cold shut, which will cause a failure in the tool, just like it happened to these bolt jaw tongs.
cool down a little bit here. So if you could see there off the background, we've started that new cut. Um, if you can see by the background, see those other two nicks and the piece of metal I'm holding up. Those are from messed up cuts in the past. And that is what will cause hold shuts and tool failure when completed. So I've got my gloves here. I'm going to turn the camera over here to the vise. And we're going to be throwing some sparks as we're all grasping this piece. The, the rasp I'm using is just an old fairy's rasp. I actually found this lying around on a ranch. Probably actually from the early 1900s. Or the early 20th century, whichever way you like it to be said. But we're gonna cinch this piece up and hot rasp it. So, if you guys are watching, you want to see some sparks? Here's your time. there you go there's it nice and cleaned up so blow this back on the fire and this is almost done that's a little simple slot punch even give it a little brushing here but there you go um Gabriel Figueroa um I've actually learned this trade mostly off of the lovely YouTube, which I'm streaming onto currently. But also, um, I've learned a bit from books. I've learned a bit from, well, I actually first got into this um, trade. I'll turn you guys up so you can actually see my face while I'm talking. So I actually got into this trade originally at a Boy Scout camp. Um, camp, its name is Camp Fleshman. Um, it's up in California. And they had a blacksmith shop there. You know, I, I always knew blacksmithing was cool. So, you know, I took it, took the merit badge, earned the merit badge, just had a blast in doing it. My dad also wanted to do this when he was a um, Boy Scout. And he did the blacksmithing program at a camp called camp or uh, Philmont Ranch, which is basically a camp, a whole ranch that is owned by the Boy Scouts of America, and he really got into it there, and so I basically pushed him to the point where he actually got to doing what he wanted to do, because I also wanted to do it, and now we have this lean-to here that's built off of our um, Conics container. I'll spin you guys around. You can see it's four post lean-to. And to turn you guys farther than up, you can see the edges of the Conex container there. Um, we built a workbench from milled lumber. The workbench is quite messy right now just because, you know, housekeeping. But, and we just took it from here. I mean, the thing I love about blacksmithing and one of the big things that made me really get into it is the fact that blacksmithing really is the base of all society. And you may like be like, ah, okay, he's talking crazy now. But like, blacksmithing, the blacksmith is the person who made all the tools to build everything 
that we're able to build and construct today. The blacksmith is the one that made the tools for the carpenter to go and build the houses and the cabins and all the different buildings. The blacksmith was the person that made the basic tools for the machinist to then go make his own tools and further and further. And that's just that's just why another reason I love blacksmithing so much. But steels get pretty hot. Better not leave it in there so we don't lose all the carbon content in our steel. So let's get forging. Try not to throw my hammer around anymore. There we go, we're making a lot more progress there. Can't really see the steel's really quite hot still. Like you can really feel how quickly I mean the steel loses about 20, 30 degrees a second. So you know that adds up pretty quick. So now that we're almost done with my hot cut chisel, we're just gonna dress it up. I'm going to dress it up with my little rounding hammer I forged. And this is one of the first um, tools that me and my father forged together. It's about a two pound rounding hammer forged out of a drive shaft that is used to drive a big baler for baling hay. So, and it's been working pretty well. Um, you know, out here learning, we made it too thin, broke it off, welded it back together, but it has a story, and that's what I love about it. And it works damn well, so. There you go. There's the punch. Pretty basic, but it'll do the job that I need. So, next heat, we're just going to cut it off, clean it up, and add it to the collector. Um, and we're also going to heat treat it. Um, I'm going to heat treat it in cold oil. So, S7, um, its properties, its um chemical properties or not necessarily chemical but its physical properties is it is a air hardening steel so it will high carbon steels um why we we blacksmiths or why we um people that like to manipulate the metals like you know like to have high carbon steels is because it, you know, the carbon built into the grain structure. I'm sorry, I, I was a little distracted by something going off in the distance. Well, the carbon is in the 
builds up in the grain structure of the steel to basically cause the steel to become harder. But with too hard, you get brittle, and that's where you, if any of you've watched Forge of Fire and you see blade snap, that's usually where they haven't softened the steel back up enough for it to be temperamental and to be ductile enough to be able to take whatever portion they're applying to it. But you want that happy medium. Which means we're going to be making these a, a lot more ductile and a lot softer than you would see like a high grade knife. But we're also going to be applying a lot more force when we are going to be whaling on it with an 8 to a 10 pound sledge to get it to, you know, go through a piece of metal. So, quick little thing there. And I'm going to finish up cutting this A2. Are getting there people hey it's really hard to see the camera just does not like to focus on going orange steel I buy isn't that what counts the trying There you go. Give it one little flop back and forth, and there you go. Chisel. I made it quite short because I'm not going to be holding the chisel with my hand because. No, thank you. But there you go, chisel. Again and again, I'm going to um, hot use the hot rasp to just smooth out the top and get it nice and dressed. And we'll have, and then I'll heat treat it by quenching it in oil. And then we'll also run the colors through it using the torch. But we'll show all that when we get to that point. At this current point now, we're going to be grabbing the steel. Try not to burn myself. It's a good thing to try to do and not to burn.
I'm gonna put my gloves back on because I'm gonna hot rest for this. There's the vice. So let's throw some spark. So there you go. That's the punch. And there's the tongue that I'm actually going to use to hold it. Turn you back to the anvil here. And stick this in one more time. We'll heat treat it. And then we'll have a, not a piece of metal in the shape of a punch, but then we'll actually have a functional tool. I'm going to take my gloves off because they are an inhibitor on me able to hold the steel tightly. Really not good. Almost set something on fire, but you know, there's our off chunk. So you can see, I'll quench it real quick. Now you can see just how screwed up it is. I'm trying to get the camera to see that caused a lot of cold shots and a lot of angry me there you go poor shot to chisel We've been going for a good 30 minutes, but I've been wearing my safety glasses like this the entire time. I am sorry. I'm a really bad example. But so now I'm going to turn you guys over here. The white one right there. That one right there. This one is my heat treated tank, so be watching there. And I'll be right back in like literally two seconds. I'm just gonna grab the steel, I'm gonna dip it in there, and you're gonna see probably some flames. I'm also grabbing my glove because I don't wanna catch on fire. Done that before. Oh, 
Well, I was just joking apparently because I did set my tool completely in the forge, which then caused it not to heat up evenly. So I kind of pulled a trick on you guys, not purposely. I'm sorry for that, but give it. About another 30 seconds. All right. I think we're ready. Let's make the fire. There you go. What do you know? Did not crack on me. Did not hear any tinking. Did not hear any of the um, dreadful sounds that you get if you do a bad treat. So the tool is intact. I'm extremely happy that it did not break. It did not get a crack in it. That it did not like completely snap in two. But the one thing I hate about being in sand is whenever I drop something, I just quench the oil, which I always seem to do. I think I've done it about twice where I have not. Dipped it in water somehow, or I'm not dipped in water. Dipped it in the sand and got it completely sandy. I've done that probably twice where I haven't. So I guess it's a tradition, you could say. I don't know. At this point, I'm just kind of getting used to, you know, always finding its way into the sand. now at this point this thing's almost done you play a game of hot potato with how hot it is still well I mean not really a game of hot potato more of like a um, scalding third degree burn potato but let me quench it and I can pull it with my dealers and show you guys. Now it's like at the perfect temp because it's a little chilly out here. As you can tell by my breath, but wipe this off on my apron a little so it's, all the water isn't reflecting the light off of it. But as you look down there, it's a rectangular punch, which then spreads every, you know, quite smoothly down and gradually down to, you know, the main half inch shank. And then the head is rounded down. So as you are hammering on it and as you are using it, it does not get mushroomed over because it is going to get soft up here because we are going to temper it. We're going to run the colors down. So 
that's what we're going to be doing next. So I want to show the board. To the point where it is barely burning and I'm going to scrape off the um, mill scale or the forge scale off of this piece so that because what we're going to be watching we're going to be watching the metallic colors of the metal run because we're going to start from the back here because we want the end softer than the tip here so we're going to watch those colors creep up till we have a kind of a hay color yellow up on the front to peel the forge scale off, I'm probably just going to use a old file because I don't feel like using some power tools on the video. It just kind of screws it up and it makes your ears hurt, especially if you're wearing headphones. I know that from for a fact. And again, I'm regretting getting my flashlight inside. Here's my file. Back to the vise here. Bring you guys up close and personal. Hope you guys didn't cut out there, but my phone wasn't charging. I was back to 10%, which is not really a good plan for if you want to keep on, you know, doing the live stream. And I'm just going to sit down here. And we're going to expose... bare metal on this and you guys are like ow ouch oh what are you doing to the file this file is worn out it's seen a good life it's gotten a lot of use so um, i'm going to turn the forge up just a little bit more because if you could probably hear it's going plop 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 and it's just not getting enough fuel so But now, as you can see there, I'm going to bring you guys real up close and personal with this. So you can watch, so you can hopefully watch these colors run into the steel. This is honestly super beautiful to me. I love seeing this. All right, so as you can probably see there, you can see the metallic look of the metal. I might even bring you guys around here. So you are on the high light side. Ah, I think it looked better on the other side. Bring you guys right in here. 
And there you go. You can see the metallic metal. I'm going to go grab the torch and we'll start running the colors. Honestly, one of my favorite parts. You can hammer hot steel all day and it'll manipulate in all the ways that you make it. But this honestly is super beautiful. I'm going to throw it through the forge real quick. That'll get it hot really quick so that you guys aren't waiting here for like 20 more minutes because I'm going to cut the stream about an hour long. So. All right, there we go. We got our first colors forming. I'm gonna throw you guys a device here so you can watch these colors come down. I got it just hot enough so we're having these colors start and then we'll continue to follow the colors with the torch. This is honestly really peaceful to me. These colors are moving quite fast now. I don't know if you can see the colors. If you can't, I'll try to show them a little later. But I do need this tool, so I'm not going to try to compromise the heat rate of the tool too much for the video aspect. But we'll do our best for sure. Also grabbing my pliers so that I can grab this thing out because it is the vice, you know, larger mass is getting rid of all the heat. Can you guys see those colors? Yeah, there you go. Look at those. So you can see kind of that straw, yellow up there, blue, and then purple. There we go. Look at those beautiful colors. And we're getting too far.
and those the colors are just formed by the oxidation of the metal and as it oxidizes the iron creates the different colors which is really quite beautiful um like i've already said it's quite peaceful to me to watch the colors flow they've really darkened up now after quenching I'm trying to maybe hit it with some there we go wipe it off of my apron thank you Gabriel for sticking along yeah. you're the only person that's still watching and I really really do appreciate you still watching you are honestly the only person that's keeping me still on this live stream and hopefully people can use this later but you can it's kind of hard to see on camera it's really not kind of it's really hard to see on camera trying to get it to flash its colors almost need to hit it with the polisher but i don't have it out here and again i don't really like using power tools on the live stream because it's made people mad before there you go you can, on the tip there you can kind of see those i got a little hot on the tip but still when you take it with a file the file is unable to actually touch the true steel. Like I said, it'll peel off the um mill scale or the forged scale, but it will not touch the actual metal. And that's exactly what you want. So those colors are showing that the metal is now technically a bit softer than when I was fresh out of the quench. But those colors will make it this will be the real test. This one I'm going to have to put my safety glasses on for. But I'm going to hit it with my hammer. And we're going to see if it snaps off. If it snaps off, I did not do a good job. But if it, you know, kind of stays, we know I did a good job. As you can see, I'm putting my safety glasses on. As you can see, I wasn't hitting it super hard because I'm not trying to break it. But we even get on the tip there a little bit more. And it just popped out of the vise. But did not break. And I'll prove that it did not break by the tip is not shiny. See, tip is still dull. No fresh metal there. So... This has been a successful forging of a little um, square punch that fits nicely into my half inch rivet tongs. It's a bunch of beeping coming from somewhere. But um, past that, there you go. That's the punch. Pretty, pretty happy with that. Um, thank you, Gabriel, for sticking along for the entire time. And I'm going to find your channel. And, and if I'm not subscribed to you, I will subscribe to you. But there you go. Showed the forging of it. Showed the... You know, hot rasping and the shaping of it, but basically same thing as the forging of it. Showed the hardening of it, and showed the tempering of it. And showed the final project, I mean the product, and a little bit of testing just to show that it did not create an absolute piece of crud. Because you can forge a piece of metal, but it won't really be a tool until you breathe the life into it. And that breathing the light in life into it is when you give the hardness to it. 
and you give the tempering to it because it'll just be a piece of metal in the shape of what you want. But when you actually temper it and you harden it and temper it, you basically make it a usable tool because if you just took the S7, yeah, it'd probably work for one or two forgings, but it would break just like this punch here. I forged this out just a piece of mild steel. Basically would be the same about as a piece of S7 that's annealed. And annealed just means that the metal has been softened to a point where it is no longer has any hardness in it. Where basically you have the molecules and the atoms. It technically would be the molecules of the steel are relaxed in a relaxed state. So that they are not, you know, cinched up tight. But this, we have it cinched up tight enough that it'll do the job and it'll resist the heat. And will hold its shape as you are beating on it. But then softened enough so that it doesn't just snap off like I showed there earlier. So, thanks so much for watching. For everyone that has joined into the live stream... And that's, you know, commented and said hi. I really, really appreciate it. Um, especially thank you to Gabriel um, Figueroa. Tell me if I pronounced your na last name wrong. But I'm hoping I did not. But especially thanks to you. You've stuck through the entire live stream. You're the very first comment that showed up. And you're still the same person that stuck through the entire stream and working weaver thanks so much for dropping in but this is the end of the live stream right at 58 minutes about almost 59 so we're basically stopping at right at an hour so thank you again and i hope you guys will join in for when we forge the larger version of this punch that then we'll use to punch a hole and a piece of steel, which we will then turn into a claw hammer. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And, yep, thank you again just for dropping in. Especially thanks to Gabriel. And I will see everyone that shows up in the next stream again. So, thanks so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.